all, uh, this video is in response to a lot of questions we got from uh, the broadcast of January 19th, 2021. Emergency power for when there are outages. And of course, we all know, especially if you live in California, that uh, these days the power company is super gun shy of any kind of adverse weather conditions that might even hint at the possibility that if they keep the power on in a neighborhood it might cause a wildfire how does that affect you and me well more and more people are turning to and uh, the idea of how do i have backup emergency power so the january 19th show was all about that in which i talked about all of the uh, high-end versions all the way down to uh, the lowest end options. High-end versions meaning uh, backup solar batteries. Having a built-in whole house backup generator tied into a natural gas supply. And uh, I covered all those options. I'm not returning to those for this video. What piqued a lot of people's attention was the idea of a portable generator and that would be the third tier down big old portable generators this last outage that we had uh there were people just running them out the door by the tens uh at the local home depot and lowe's and rental yards not even knowing at the time that the big job site size generators that they were buying were so loud and so heavy that portable was a relative term. And as far as the uh, the noise that they create actually exceeds almost every residential noise ordinance. And so as a result, you end up running those things, especially at night, you can get yourself into trouble. So what is the fourth option? An inverter style generator. Basically an inverter style generator is a truly portable generator that is designed essentially for recreational vehicles. And because they're camping generators, because they're RV generators, because the assumption is that you're gonna be parked just a few feet away from the next RV and the next campsite and the next one down, these are extremely quiet generators. It's a 2,500 watt output generator and it is an inverter and also it's a dual fuel generator it can run off of gasoline which goes in here or it can also run off of propane the same propane tanks that you run your barbecue with in the backyard why do i like propane propane uh, runs this generator longer number one and number two propane is much safer to store long term it can store indefinitely without the fuel itself degrading. Storing a couple of gallons of gasoline in the garage is never a good idea because that's like a bomb waiting to go off. And number two, if it sits there for a year or two, the gasoline separates and it's not as good a gasoline uh, as it was when you first pumped it in. So for today's demonstration, we're going off of a propane tank, which is my preference, but it's nice to have a backup. The other thing I like about propane is that I've got a fuel gauge on the canister so I know exactly how much uh, gas I've got left and it doesn't get messy doesn't get all over your hands here is what uh, the elaborate process of hooking propane up to your generator is and we're good so again the other reason that I'm in favor of the inverter generator for so many residential situations is that's how noisy it is we're having this conversation and I'm right next to it. Now, I'm right next to it. You don't have to be right next to it because the generator's gonna be outside. So just for a second, let's take the camera inside and shut this sliding glass door. So what's better than one inverter generator during a power outage? Two inverter generators. So we got 2,500 watts of power here, room for a couple of extension cords to come out. 2,500 more watts here and two more extension cords. But that's not really the magic of two inverter generators. These generators come equipped, ready to be set up in parallel with each other. So I can plug into this generator, plug into this one, and when they are running together, they produce a single source of 5,000 watts of power. And coming out of this hub, you'll notice these aren't normal outlets. These are rigged up for an RV style cord, like a, this one. So 30 amp, 5,000 watts of power now coming out of this single supply. But the big question is, where does the other end of this cord go? Okay, well again, we could stop 
right there. This is the other end of the cord. We could buy an inexpensive adapter to take this four prong cord, 30 amp, 5,000 watt power supply and split it into a bunch of standard extension cord outlets and run a bunch of extension cords in and through the house. But think about it, pulling the refrigerator out of, from a wall so you can get to the cord in the back and things like that can be uh, pretty inconvenient. And there is a easier way to do it. And that is why we're over here by the electrical panel. This is the doohickey that I mentioned at the end of uh, the January 19th broadcast that I want to draw everybody's attention to. It is a manual transfer switch. Now, what is a manual transfer switch? Well, it first starts off basically as a sub panel off of the main electrical panel. Inside though, things are a little different than a regular sub panel. There is this specialized breaker with this toggle bar on it. And what this toggle bar allows is for the power that feeds these eight circuits to be transferred either from A, right now, the main electrical power, or if the panel goes down because of an outage, boop, we flip this, and now these eight circuits can be powered from a cord feed underneath the transfer box itself. And guess where this is leading? To our generators. So, when the power goes down, you pull out your generators, you hook them up into parallel, you bring the cord over to the manual transfer switch box, plug the cord into its outlet, and then with the flick of this switch, eight circuits that are inside the house that you've pre-chosen ahead of time will all have power running to them. In our case, those eight circuits are microwave, the refrigerator, uh, a set of lights, a set of bathroom outlets, a set of kitchen outlets, the tankless water heater, and I don't even remember, oh, the internet, and something else that I can't remember right now. But the point is, we will be fully up and running of all of our essentials without pulling appliances out of the wall, without having to run extension cords in through windows or doors. It's neat. It's clean. So all of this to say, anywhere from $650 up to about $3,000 with a little bit of code-approved ingenuity can have any normal size house ready for a power outage and keep things pretty convenient and not very rustic. And that is the manual transfer switch. Oh, oh, oh.